Hi everyone, this is Moses Kemibaro and welcome to my podcast, Pure Digital Passion, where we basically have conversations uh, with leaders and thinkers within the spaces of digital across Kenya and the rest of the continent. Uh, in today's session, um, I had an opportunity to interview Chris Sananu, uh, the well-known technology professional who's worked through a number of companies such as uh, Telcom Kenya, uh, Access Kenya, and most recently when he joined in June 2021, uh, Safaricom in the role of Chief Business Enterprise Officer. Chris is somebody that I've known for a very long time. We both went to USIU Africa, the university based here in Nairobi, and we met, I think, back in 1994 uh, when I joined USIU. And surprisingly, we got to know each other through my younger brother, uh, who knew some mutual friends. And when I was looking for an apartment in Nairobi at the time, because I was not able to get uh, student accommodation on campus, uh, Chris and I somehow ended up in the same building uh, where I was renting a room uh, with another student at the university. And then basically over the years, we became great friends. We both have had careers uh, in the technology space and specifically uh, during the time that I worked at companies like Formnet and Africa Online, he was at companies like Swift Global and later on Access Kenya. So to some extent, we've been frenemies because we worked in companies that uh, quite often would be competing within the marketplace. Uh, but fast forward, um, back when he joined Telcom, I think about five or six years ago, Telcom Kenya, uh, I had an interview with him, which you'll probably find uh, across my blogs and other platforms. And recently, again, in June 2021, when I was having this particular podcast, um, it was just when he had just actually just joined Safaricom uh, in this new role. Uh, Chris has had a reputation uh, and a good one at that for being in the B2B side of the Internet services space. Um, he was instrumental in growing Access Kenya and the same when he did at companies like Internet Solutions. Uh, which had then acquired uh, Access Kenya and later on, of course, at Telcom Kenya, where it was responsible for the enterprise side of the business, the B2B side of what Telcom Kenya does. And of course, now at Safaricom, Chris has been very much at the forefront of new initiatives uh, targeting the enterprise space at Safaricom, which we know as a business and a brand that has been extremely successful in the consumer side of what they do. But probably there's a lot of room for growth within the B2B space. Uh, which lends to reason why uh, SafariCon would have tapped him uh, to lead that particular function. But anyway, without much ado, I would like to uh, get us started on this interview. It wasn't particularly long, about 10 minutes, but generally Chris shared his vision at the time and ideas and inspirations and the motivation behind joining SafariCon, which, as we know, is one of the largest companies in this part of the world, and more importantly, the leader in most uh, internet and digital services at a time when the pandemic has forced us all to adopt a new digital lifestyle. This is Moses Kemibaro and welcome to my podcast, Pure Digital Passion with Chris Sinalo. So, uh, hi Chris, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you on this interview, this Q&A to talk about your transition to Safaricom from Telcom, where you've been for a number of years. So thank you very much for joining me for the chat. Thank you for having me on uh, on this chat, uh, Moses. Um, yeah, I think it's been approximately, what, five years <laughs> since... Um, our last conversation like this one. Our last conversation like this. Um, <laughs> and I think that's uh, a big part of um, probably why we are where we are. I mean, I, I think I've always been a strong believer of um, a reason for a season. Yes, yes. And I think you remember that when you interviewed me when I was leaving Access for Telcom, I said, listen, I had done 15 years in Access, but in three different types of companies. The private um, family company that we set up, we grew it, we made it public. Yes. We ran it for a public entity for another five, six years. And then we um, exited the stock exchange and ran it as a multinational. And after that, I felt, okay, I've done almost everything that needs to be done here. I need a new challenge. And so moving to Telcom for me was a, a new chapter. Um, and I was excited about specific things. In Telcom, it was a private equity play together with the government of Kenya. And um, we had very clear uh, um, objectives as to what we wanted to achieve in a four to five year period. 
And so for me, it was more that the period was over. We'd achieved greatly most of the things we wanted to achieve. Um, obviously, the exit didn't occur as expected. Um, we tried a merger for exit. It didn't work. And that's okay. In life, some things work, some things don't work, and you, you move on. But for me, I think the key thing was that uh, five years had come. Yeah. Uh, and I felt it was time to move on, to look for another challenge and to, to stretch myself and to ensure that I kept on uh, learning, growing, and adding more impact to the uh, technology environment in Kenya. So, of course, I got to ask this question, you know, Telcom to Safaricom. I mean, Safaricom, I think, is one of the most admired companies in this part of the world, not just in Kenya. Um, clearly, you have very strong market presence, market position. Um, the consumer space is something that we clearly know they're very strong in. I think the home space is something that they're also doing well in, in terms of connectivity and services. And then, of course, now the enterprise space, which is where I believe your role has taken you, but I'm just curious to just hear your point of view around the attraction, the new challenge, and, and just sort of joining Safaricom. Maybe you can share that with us. I mean, I think you you put the you put it rightly when you say Safaricom is known very much as a consumer business, and in terms of the consumer part, is very strong, and so is the the M-Pesa. I think what it is less known for is the enterprise or the, 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 the business B2B seg, seg, segments. And so for me, it's just uh, the way I look at it, it's uh, a bigger challenge in B2B, which as you know, I'm very comfortable and familiar with. I've worked my whole life in B2B. And um, so I see this as an opportunity to put the B2B part of Safaricom um, at a greater uh, positioning or level in the market. Uh, Safaricom is very successful, as you said, they have a lot of good products. I do believe that um, at this point, the, the move is to move from being seen as a telco to being seen as a technology company. And that's where I believe my strengths, um, as in my ex experience and my, my, my exposure um, in technology itself in the, over the past 25 years is going to come in handy in terms of um, helping the B2B segment or the B2B division of Safari move to the next level. So when you do enterprise in the context of Safaricom, what is that? Is that is that connectivity? Is that uh, cloud? What sort of offerings are we looking at here? So it, the traditional stuff remains. So there's the fixed services, um, such as the connectivity, broadband, uh, you know, for... Um, but we are also adding things like IoT mm -hmm. and ICT services, managed services, um, obviously, there's the B2B part of um, M-Pesa, and there's um, also platforms, digital platforms that have to be um, that created on the back of M-Pesa for transactions and for uh, digitization of various services. So that, that's what um, enterprise entails. So it's quite broad, so I've been cascading even across to payments as well, huh? Yes, the, the B2B part of um, payment. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. So from your perspective, I mean, what do you see as the opportunities going forward, you know, you know given now that you have this, I suppose, larger canvas to work with, you know, there's this Safaricom as a platform, and then, of course, you with your, you know, decades level of experience in this space you know what do you see going forward in terms of you know the opportunities that uh, you'll be able to hopefully open up for safaricom i mean i i see an opportunity to partner with um, a lot of younger i mean a, a lot of tech companies um, i think partnership for me is a big opportunity there's a lot of tech that's happening in kenya and 
I think on one hand, Safaricom has to enable some of these tech companies to become bigger. Um, but I also see the, the partnership delivering better bespoke and tailor-made services to the end user. Um, so that's one of the big opportunities that I see. I, I see an opportunity to, to raise the bar in terms of B2B service provision um, in, in Kenya and the region in general. Um, and I see an opportunity um, for Safaricom to take its rightful place in B2B. No, I love that. It's rightful place in B2B. I think you're right. I think historically they just haven't been seen as you know, a major plan enterprise. I think you know, in terms of top of mind in the way that the consumer business is being seen today. So yeah, clearly I think you're the right guy for the job. Um, and maybe uh, Chris, uh, uh, maybe my last question. I mean, when you think about this sort of, you know, two to five years from now, you know, where, what do you see in terms of the growth prospects at Safaricom? Uh, and then maybe, you know, at a personal level, at a professional level, where do you see yourself going in this? So maybe as a last question, you could share that with me. Um, look, there's massive growth opportunity for Safari Coral. There's massive, let me start, there's massive growth opportunity for technology in Kenya in general. I think um, now that we're, we're, we're through with the shock of COVID, everybody understands why digitization, digital platforms, and automation in general are important. Um, I think the move for people to work from home, we're never going to go back to what it was before where every day people wake up in the morning, they sit in traffic and they drive to work. Most industries, most segments, most uh, uh, companies are, are rethinking uh, what it means, um, what work means you know, the concept of work. And so therefore, um, the shift has, has occurred. Um, COVID was the catalytic converter, which has sped things up. And so, you know, just the way they say, you can't stop reggae, you cannot stop the digitization <laughs> movement. Um, we're moving forward and it, it's, um, it's, not going to, it's not going to be any let down. What does that mean? That, that means that um, the, 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 the networks, the infrastructure that a, a company has, a technology company has, um, and the, the platforms and the services are going to be more important as time goes by. Um, for me, on a personal level, I see this as an opportunity to create massive impact uh, using the Safaricom brand, the Safaricom infrastructure, and the Safaricom cloud to be able to make some massive changes um, in certain verticals. Um, I do believe that you're going to see a lot of action from us when it comes to IoT and um, definitely some, some, some massive uh, differentiated products when it comes to cloud also. So I see this as public, uh, I mean, as, as, as an opportunity, both in the public sector and in the private sector to make uh, some impactful uh, changes that um, can make people's lives easier, specifically because we have now all, you know, adopted digi a digital living. Wow, fantastic, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. And um, looking forward again, maybe hopefully it won't take another five years, but uh, <laughs> but I'll say all the best, you know, at Safaricom, and uh, we're looking out for you. We are we are cheering you on, and we know that you're gonna do amazing things. Asante sana. Asante sana, Moses. Take care and have a lovely evening, and greetings to the family. Okay. Mm -hmm.